Okay, uh, we are this time going to talk about Hemphill Township. Previously we saw something about uh, the town of Greensburg. And Hemphill Township is what surrounds the town. And uh, what I do want to say is that uh, I've done research in this area, you know, historical research. And I read the histories that were written, and what I could see is that many of the areas of history were well covered, like military history, and religious history, educational history, uh, economic history. And one thing that uh, people seemed to want to shy away from was industrial history, the, the history of what people did. And I almost don't even like to use that term because when people hear industrial history, they think, ooh. And it's often not very appealing to people because, for one thing, the way it's presented. Another, uh, also, it's like it was like what people did every day. And, and the way people work changed as, as, you know, you go backwards in time. What you think of as industrial history is very different. Uh, so I decided that I would try to find out what was going on in the past of this area as far as what people were making, you know, what they were doing with their hands, how they were spending most of their lives, because what a person makes usually is what uh, often how they're defined. As a matter of fact, people's last names often derive from what their ancestors did, a smith or a miller, a carpenter. And you get through people's last names, and you can find many of them that derive from a trade. And that's true, not just in English, but in other languages. Uh, I am a, uh, I do visual art quite a bit. And I have learned the importance of doing the broad brushwork first, when you start something, to get into heavy strokes, to do the, you know, the basic image and then after you have the basics in, then work on the refinement, the, the, the details. And I found that that works also doing, uh, you know, when you're trying to explain something, either verbally or in a written form. And to get in the broad strokes of what we're talking about, you know, as far as what were people, people were doing in the early times, it can be summed up in a very uh, quick and... Uh, overgeneralized statement, but, it, but it's a way of getting in the broad strokes. You talk about mills and stills. Mills and stills. The old mills were very important, and the old stills were very important. And they were not just important, they were very, very interrelated. The uh, stills needed the mills. You didn't just throw grain in something and hope it was going to ferment you had to somewhat grind it up. Not certainly as fine as you would have to for flour, but you, you ground it more or less as chop, like you would for animals, and then you could you know add water and let it sit and it would start to ferment, and then put it in your still and uh, you know make it, uh, distill it and make it more powerful. Uh, and also the mills did a lot more than uh, we think about. But all those things we'll talk about and we're going to stop here and then show some pictures. We are looking here at the still of no less a personage than the father of our country, George Washington. Uh, this is very much what the old stills looked like and they were extremely valuable commodities simply because you could make money from these things that you could not make from your farm. You could make more money from a still than you could from selling the products of your farm. <clears throat> and a still that was uh, about a hundred gallon still, which was a bit bigger than this one, would uh, produce, or actually you could, you could, exchange or trade or barter uh, that, that, that size of a still 
for a whole farm of about 200 acres uh, simply because of what it could make. This is the old township. This is a very sketchy and incomplete map. And uh, you see these little little markings, these funny little things that uh, have the little, it's like a circle with the little things sticking up. These are symbols of the mills, the early mills. And believe me, there were a lot more mills than showed up on these early maps. We know that by 1802, there were 20 mills in Hemfield Township, and probably about twice that many stills. Very little doubt about it. Uh, this was William Findlay. He was the uh, representative from Westmoreland County to the United States House of Representatives. He had been a captain in the Revolution and served as a representative to the uh, convention when the Constitution was being uh, drawn up. And in the course of his, uh, his activities, he rode through the county and he made the observation saying that a person cannot ride through the county anywhere and be outside or away from the smoke of someone still kind of giving tribute to the fact that there were a lot of those things. This is how people were ex in a way surviving because after the revolution there was not a lot of money and the one valuable commodity that was available was liquor. I mean it was like the standard of exchange. A person was uh, a commodity was often valued in terms of how much liquor it would take to buy it. And I think that might be enough said now to sum this up and talk more about it later.